Hello there, people of the internet. This is not exactly the greatest of backdrops, but uh, I'm currently not at my usual recording station. But what I do have is a 8890 that I am intending to look at and I'm going to, so I figure I may as well record it. So this is just kind of an ad hoc recording session where I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna dig into this. Let's go ahead and hit play. So this right here is a RTI grab and what this is is this is one of those um, straight pull Steyr rifles one of those straight uh, straight pull in or not M95 M95 style of rifle that's not actually an M95 this is actually a version of rifle that came before that pattern uh, the 88 slash 90 and this actually uses a flapper locking system as opposed to the uh, M95's rotating bolt system which was much stronger than uh, this system right here. I don't have any, any ammunition for this, and even if I did, I don't have a means to shoot it with my current location, but I do wanna dig into the rifle and see what I have. So this actually kind of unboxed itself, which was really convenient. As soon as I cut the box open, it just kind of right out of the box. So here she is, and uh, this did have a cardboard sleeve over it, typical RTI fashion to add a little extra layer of protection, and she is very nice and wrapped. Now, as I'm feeling my way through here, I don't feel anything like really significantly bent or damaged, so knowing RTI, that sometimes happens. As a matter of fact, that has happened to me more than once with a couple of rifles. So let's go ahead, open this bad boy up, and we're going to have a look. This is my first time seeing the rifle as well, so you guys will get to see my impressions, and that's all the fun of an unboxing video. You get lots of bubble wrap for years of enjoyment with you and your kids. I'm already seeing some gorgeous tiger striping on this rifle, so even if it's completely like not usable, then the tiger striping alone for this rifle makes it one hell of a gorgeous wall hanger. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Look at this steampunk looking stock fix on this thing that is insane that is clearly a hand done ethiopian thing that was done to this rifle likely because the stock was broken that is cool i know a lot of people would be like oh no that's that's terrible i got a broken stock on this thing otherwise the wood on this is gorgeous look at that tiger striping that is neat that is a neat stock repair right there that's not that's that's i was not expecting that there's a lot of things I was not expecting with this rifle, but, oh, huh. well, that's certainly not a complete bolt, but you know what? We're going to go ahead and just put this back in here and pretend we didn't see that. Okay, I can see I'm going to have to play with this bolt a little bit in order to get it back in. So the bolt is not complete, but it does look like we have a proper firing pin on this thing, right? Here's our uh, locking system, our little locking wedge for this bolt. And it looks like we're missing the rear cocking piece. And da, 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 there's a little piece on the side that we're missing as well. That might be our bolt retention system. I actually have more than one of these rifles and I'm expecting to have some that are basically just going to be wall hangers. And this one right here might just be a wall hanger. Between the broken stock and our busted up bolt, I don't foresee me bringing this one out to the range, but this is still chambered in 8x50, so the ammunition for it is basically not a obtainable. So as a direct result of that, I wasn't really expecting to bring one of these out to the range. Anyway, on the side of our receiver here, this is our bolt retention system. Looks like we are missing our spring on the side, and that's likely why the bolt uh, came out on this thing. Let me have a look at our sear inside the rifle pull the trigger down the sear seems to work so once i figure out how to put that bolt back inside of this thing then we should be functional at least although not like it really matters like i said before i don't really expect to be using this thing for any real significant purposes we have on the side of the stock right here very worn out but it does say aoi that's a pretty common ethiopian stamp that just means that the italians got their hands on this rifle 
uh, absolutely caked and lathered in cosmoline and whatnot. But that is not a complaint for me, simply because this stuff is not that hard to clean off. Our sights look complete and they seem to be functional. That's a really good sign. Uh, on the receiver band itself, it just says WG on it. I'm not sure if who, you know, what sort of manufacturer that is. I'm looking for a date stamp on it, which I do not see, but that's all right. Sometime in the late 1800s, this rifle was likely made. All right, it does look like we are missing a stacking rod on this. Oh God, camera, don't you go anywhere. You guys stay right there. It does look like we're missing a stacking rod on this, if these even came with stacking rods. Definitely missing our uh, cleaning rod there. But since that bolt is out of the rifle, let me have a look at the rifling. Well, that's not gonna work. I need a brighter light than that. Upon first inspection in the barrel, there's definitely some crap in there. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to clean that out. But let's see if I can at least get a glimpse of rifling. Well, I'll be damned. I actually see some rifling in this thing. Of course, the barrel's completely, like, war-trodden. And, uh, completely destroyed, but... I do see some rifling inside this thing, so there might be a little bit of hope. As a matter of fact, this is chambered by 8x50, and 8mm Mauser, although not quite the proper diameter for a lot of these rifles, and you never really know until after you slug the barrel, but it should be close enough to give us a good indication as to whether or not this is going to have a shot out barrel. We'll be right back. So here we have 8mm Mauser. And da -da 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 -da, let's find out. This is a 323 diameter round. Well, I'll be damned, but you look at that. If I can get this thing shooting, this has plenty of barrel life left inside of it. And between this and the other one, I'm sure I'll have enough parts and pieces together to uh, at least get one usable one. I'll probably end up swapping out the stocks depending on the condition of the stock on that one. But the barrel in this one is still usable. Well, I was trying to put my bolt back in, but it seems like I'm being caught on something. So yeah, I'm going to have to play around with that. Uh, the bolt's catch appears to be completely pushed out at this point, and I'm not quite sure what it is that we're catching on. So there's got to be some sort of system here that I'm simply not understanding. Ah, okay. I think I figured it out. It appears that our locking wedge has to be in the downward position and this has to actually be cocked in order for me to get this bolt into our rifle. And she's seized up and that is not cocking easily so I'm just going to set that aside and I'll play with that later. So this is a really, really sweet rifle. Not in the greatest of shape but it does have a decent bore. Uh, the the wood on it is gorgeously tire striped. It'll be really interesting to see how well that this cleans up. And this is this is actually a really really cool steampunk repair on this thing. I like the uh, the the handguard on this. That is definitely just a field repair done by somebody over in Ethiopia. Absolutely incredible. I have never had a rifle where I had anything even remotely close to that. Looks like we have some primers that are shoved into the stock for decoration. That's pretty typical of uh, Ethiopian rifles. So all things considered, uh, whenever I got this, I got it for like, I think it was the $99 flash sale that they were having. So I don't regret this at all. This is a really, really awesome rifle and it's going to be a really good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's going to be a really good rifle for representation purposes on the old YouTube channel. And the fact that it's got a decent bore on it, once I can actually get it assembled and up and going, this right here will be a rifle that might actually function because once I get the bolts all together and properly where it's supposed to be, our locking wedge obviously works. This right here is supposed to be down like that whenever the firing pin is out. And uh, whenever you pull the bolt back, it's supposed to cock it, but that is just Oh, hold on. I might have it here. Oh, okay. Oh, it was seized up pretty good, but I think I've got it. Let's see if I can... Let's see if I can manage to get this bad boy in there. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Aha, uh -huh. we got it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. But it does look like, since we're just missing some pieces on the bolt, that uh, the bolt itself, the, the striker on the thing, uh, manages to slam closed. So we are going to have to figure out some sort of solution to stop it from doing that. 
because this did not catch on the striker. Yeah, we got something going on here. This is supposed to catch on the striker and pull this back and hold this back. Ugh, but she just refuses to. Okay, so that's just going to drop the striker. So I'm going to have to get in here. The bolt is obviously seized up. And I'm going to have to clean the inside of the bolt. See if I can break that striker free to where it's held back. And then we should have ourselves a functioning rifle. God, this thing is absolutely disgusting. I'm definitely going to have to clean it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this. Thank you ever so much for watching. We do have our bayonet lug on this one and a good bore. I tell you what though, that hand grip, I was expecting it to not be like comfortable, but just with how much it's been worn in, I could shoot this rifle. Like that's not completely uncomfortable. The stock, however, is obviously broken off. I'm over here moving this end piece of the stock around. So, uh, this is definitely just a field repair, and that field repair might be why the, uh, the, the, the actual bore on this thing is decent, because whenever a rifle takes damage like this, they put it up in inventory, and then they decide not to use it. And so as a result, uh, this thing might have just been used for parts or something, but as a result, the bore inside of these rifles tend to be pretty gosh darn good, simply because it did not continue to get used. So I'm very pleased with this rifle. I feel like once I clean this up a little bit, it is going to be phenomenal. I'm very, very excited for this one in particular because the bore on it is fantastic. Hopefully I get a good stock on my other one. I think I could just swap the stocks out and have myself a usable rifle. Worst case scenario, neither stock is usable and I just have myself a couple of wall hangers. But like I said before, 8x50 isn't exactly something that you come across, you know, every day. So all this being said, thank you ever so much for watching, folks. I do appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day. I do see a little cut indentations in the stock right there. No idea what that is for on these 88 rifles. But uh, yeah, besides that, I'm sure somebody can go into the comments and tell me what that is. That would be incredibly helpful. All right, I'm actually gonna go grab my other one because I do have more than one, but I don't want these videos to go very long, so I'm gonna make it its own separate video. All right, I will see you guys then. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream. <laughs>